Get excited. We're going to be reading from the book of Jonah. Can you say Jonah? Who's got a friend called Jonah? That, that name's like not too popular now. I think I know one Jonah. Cool. Is Jonah Old Testament or New Testament? Old. Oh, cool. I'm glad you know that. Hey, tell me when you've got it. We're going to go to chapter one, all right? Are you ready to read? Now, I don't, we don't have um, the scriptures up there tonight, but we're going to read all of chapter one. Sometimes I just like, I just like to listen, and listening's good. So I'll try to put on my reading voice, but just have a listen because this story is pretty important. All right. Are we good to go? All right, this story um, is about Jonah. He's, he's a guy, um, he's from the town of, uh, ooh, where is he from? He's Amittai's son, but he's, um, God's asked him to preach to the people of Nineveh, and he tries to escape. And pretty much, he disobeyed God. Are you ready? All right, Jonah from Queensland, here we go. Not really. I'm reading from the, from the message, by the way, tonight. One day, long ago, God's word came to Jonah, Amittai's son, up on your feet and on your way to the big city of Nineveh. Preach to them. They're in a bad way and I can't ignore it any longer. Verse three, but Jonah got up and went the other direction. Oh no, to Tarshish. Tarshish is, is, a, is a place where it's the opposite way to Nineveh. And he ran away from God. He went down to the port of Joppa and found a ship headed for Tarshish. He paid the fare and went on board, joining those going to Tarshish as far away from God as he could. And if you know God, like you can't escape him. So I don't know how you can get as far away from God. Like if I run over there, I'm still as close as to God as I am here. But that's the human brain for you. But God sent a huge storm at sea, the waves towering. The ship was about to break into pieces. The sailors were terrified. They called out in desperation to their gods. They threw everything they were carrying overboard to lighten the ship. Meanwhile, Jonah had gone down into the hold of the ship to take a nap. Lazy guy. He was sound asleep. The captain came to him and said, What's this? Sleeping? Get up. Pray to your God. Maybe your God will see we're in trouble and rescue us. So they were, that, you know, big waves at sea. I'll be freaked out. I think if I was stuck in the middle of the ocean, that's scary enough, but you got all these waves. Crazy. All right, verse seven, we're good. Then the sailors said to one another, let's get to the bottom of this. Let's draw straws to identify the culprit on this ship. Who is responsible for this disaster? So they drew straws. Jonah got the short straw. Then they grilled him. Oh no. Confess, why this disaster? What is your work? Where do you come from? What country? What family? He told them, I'm a Hebrew. I worship God the God of heaven, who made sea and land. At that, the men were frightened, really frightened, and said, what on earth have you done? As Jonah talked, the sailors realised that he was running away from God. They said to him, what are we going to do with you to get rid of this storm? By this time, the sea was wild, totally out of control. Verse 12, we're near the end. Jonah said, Throw me overboard into the sea. Then the storm will stop. It's all my fault. I'm the cause of the storm. Get rid of me and you'll get rid of the storm. Eesh, all right. But no, the men tried rowing back to shore. They made no headway. The storm only got worse and worse, wild and raging. I think that's cool that they actually, you know, didn't want to throw Jonah overboard immediately. They, they actually tried to get back overboard. And it says why they did that. 
Then they prayed to God, O oh God, don't let us drown because of this man's life and don't blame us for his death. So they didn't want to feel that blame, you know, for chucking him overboard. But they're praying to him, you are God, do what you think is best. They took Jonah and threw him overboard. Immediately the sea was quieted down. The sailors were impressed, no longer terrified by the sea, but in awe of God. They worshipped God, offered a sacrifice and made vows. Then God assigned a huge fish to swallow Jonah. Jonah was in the fish's belly three days and three nights. Whew. And that book of Jonah, I think it's like four chapters long, but that was just the first chapter. That's a scary ending, if that was the ending, but thank God there's chapters two, three, and four. And what did Jonah do? He disobeyed God and he fled. You know, the people of Nineveh, they were pretty crazy. And I understand why Jonah would run away. Like there's always a reason that we can give. Do you know why Jonah was afraid of the people of Tarshish? Do you know how bad they were? Do you want me to tell you? Yes. Some, do, you want to, do you know anything about them? Yeah, so they were pretty much like full-on rebellious stealing and they were known for that. They were like hectic, evil people. But um, they were Assyrians and uh, they were longtime enemies of the Israelites and Jonah was one of those people. And they would have executions, impalements, flaying the skin off of prisoners and they would behead people. So... We need to see why Jonah would want to flee. And Jonah was afraid of that. But when God calls you to do something, you have his, you, you know, you have his support. And Jonah didn't realise that at first. And so he ran away. He went totally opposite. He went to Tarshish. And what happened? What swallowed him? A big fish, it says. Some people say a whale. It could have been a whale, maybe a baby shark. I don't know. No, it was a big fish. But Jonah, he was praying to God in this fish and pretty much, um, you know, having this conversation. And he went back, you know, he lived and he went to the city of um, Tarshish, sorry, um, Nineveh, and he proclaimed. And those people actually got changed and their hearts got changed for God. And that I think like, it's crazy that when God calls you to do something, He will back it up with His support. And just like tonight, um, you know, when I first got offered the youth pastor position, um, I was walking um, in a park or a trail, a track with um, Pastor Sean. And if you know Pastor Sean, he likes to walk. And he walks pretty quick. He's got a good tempo. And we're walking for about an hour and just chatting, you know, just chatting. And he said, you know, I think you'd make a good youth pastor. And this was about maybe the same time, this time last year in 2019. And, you know, when he, when he said that, I was like, oh, where are you going? Where are you going with this? And, and he said, you know, would you ever consider this position and like Jonah, like I immediately actually thought of Jonah when I got asked that. And that's why I was speaking about Jonah tonight. You know, I thought of all the reasons as to why not, like why I'm not qualified to do this. And Jonah thought he wasn't qualified to preach. And you can put yourself in a position where maybe you were asked to do something and God speaks through people and God might have asked you to do something through a person or maybe asked you personally to do something. And you know, humans, we have like heaps of excuses that we can come up with. If you didn't bring your assignment to school or you didn't do your homework, you could probably think of something off the top of your head in like a, a minute and it would sound reasonable. We can have 50 million excuses 
But we've got one reason as to why we can do everything. And that's because of Jesus. And that's so good. And I can do all things through him. And, you know, my little brother, he's, um, he's 17 now. He's, he's finishing high school this year. But um, he, he was chasing a bit of a dream that he's been doing. And you know the internet, like you can do so much from home now. You know you can work from like a basement. You could earn a living from sitting where Zach is, doing something on social media or through online. How good is that? Whose dream would be to like work from their bedroom? Yeah, some of you love your cave. That's good. But, you know, my, my brother is really into graphics, Gabriel. And, you know, even though he's young, um, he almost could have got discouraged at one point because, um, you know, gamers, how they have logos and stuff and YouTubers, how they have their intros and all those artwork and stuff. Well, my brother, um, actually, he designs logos and all this cool artwork like graphics for YouTubers, um, streamers, people on Twitch, whatever you call it, YouTube, all that stuff. And, you know, the first thing he ever made for someone, the first, I guess, job he did was maybe from someone, he's got a lot of people from the UK who message him because, you know, internet, anyone can message you hey, can you do this for me? I want a picture of a tiger going rah that says, yo, whatever. And he will make that. And the first thing, the first job he ever did, he got scammed. Yeah, who's ever been scammed? I've been scammed. Yeah, it's not a good feeling. But he did get scammed. And he had proof. He had proof of everything. And the guy said, you know what? Like, I didn't get your work. And he paid him and said, I didn't get it. So people can be shifty. And he got a, the guy got a refund and everything. And while I'm telling, why I'm telling you this story is because that, you know, could have totally put him off his dream. And that could have thrown him off what he wanted to do in life. And he's super passionate about that. And I'm so glad that passion in one moment didn't change what he wanted to pursue. And now, you know, he hasn't been scammed since because he knows how to protect himself. And he's got so many customers overseas, which is awesome. And I think it's so good to be able to know that, you know, one person can't define your future. You know, if someone tells you you can't do it or if someone hurts you or puts a spanner in the way of your path and tries to disrupt it, that can affect you for that moment. But that's just one thing that the devil's trying to get in the way of the big picture. And if he didn't keep going, you know, he wouldn't be where he is today. And he's actually going to graphic school after year 12 and he's going to be studying, um, I forget the actual name, but... It's one of those ones up there. Yeah, he's a nerd. He's a good nerd. Yeah, I wish I was that nerdy. Woo, it's hot as. <laughs> but, um, you know, tonight at, at youth, I was just talking to the leaders at the back um, before we met. And on the holidays, you know, I'm chilling out and I'm just thinking about the year. And maybe you were thinking about the year um, on the holidays because you got a lot of time just to, to think about life. And I've set goals for this year. Maybe you've set goals or you want to see things happen in 2020. And I I love that we reached the year 2020. And people can say, man, 2020 is actually like super bad right now. And you could probably tell me one bad thing that you've seen happen. I can tell you probably like quite a few things that have happened. You want to tell me one? The coronavirus? Oh no. Yes. So Australia's a bit like bipolar. 
half on fire, half in a flood, but certain parts had a bit of both. I know, it's pretty devastating. What else have, has happened this year, maybe in the month of January? Kira? Americans? Yeah, trying to, trying to like have a bit of war. Kyron? Start of World War Three? Yeah, who saw the World War Three memes going around? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, which base are you at? All right. Yep. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi gone. Very sad. One more. Year 12. Okay. All right. No, that, that'll get good. That'll get good for you. But, you know, this year, just thinking about it, honestly, just thinking about the start of the year, it, it does seem like it's gone bad in human eyes. But you see, um, there's more to life than like what's happening around you physically. And that's what I want us to get when we come to youth, like to see more than just the physical. I want to see things with spiritual eyes. And I know there's people struggling in this place. Maybe you're struggling with identity. And I've had boys and girls come up to me and say, you know, I don't know what I'm doing with my life and I don't know where I'm going. What do I do? Or I don't know my calling. And this, if you've got the calendar on you, can you tell me the word that is on the front of it? Not where the dates are, but the the front part. Chosen. 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 Chosen is what you are. And you've heard that. Maybe that sounds a bit corny or whatever you want to call it. But none of you can deny that, that you're all actually chosen. Chosen by who? Chosen by God. And people hate that when, when they hear that sometimes. Oh, how can I be chosen if this has happened to me? Or I don't have a job. Or I'm failing my grades. How could God choose someone who's getting D's on everything? Or how could God choose someone who is depressed and doesn't like what they look like? Yeah, these are real things. But God's chosen you because He formed you, you know, in your mother's womb. Who's heard of that before? And people don't live like they're chosen. I've got to be honest. And I want everyone to know that if you knew you were chosen you would start to live differently. And when you know that you're chosen, it changes your lifestyle. And maybe this is like touching you right now. You, you feel like this is speaking to you. And this feels a bit uncomfortable. Like, man, I feel like I'm not chosen and I'm headed nowhere. But God wants to tell you there's heaps for you in life. And... Um, You know, this year we're planning to do more Bible studies and things like that. Who would who would like to attend a Bible study maybe midweek and dig a bit deeper? Yeah? We might do that at um at Lynn's place. All right. So we'll keep you updated with that. I think that would be awesome. Can we get maybe some keys? (laughs) Let's give Janine a hand. Band, you can actually come up. We're going to get ready to wrap up soon. Yeah, all of the band, come up. You know, I want, um, I want 2020 to be like that decade where we can look back on maybe in 20 years' time and say, I learned so much as a teenager I learned so much in my teenage years because, you know, your teenage years are super important. Teenage years, I guess, maybe like define where you go in life. And some people say, man, I wish I did this right when I was a teenager or I wish I could take that back. But there's no going back. But 
your past doesn't define you. And some people have really crazy testimonies. Do you know someone who's had like a crazy background and has survived it? You know, I love this guy, um, this preacher, you might know Todd White, and he's got a real crazy testimony of what happened in his life before he was a Christian. And I think that's a scary place to be without God. Drug addict he was for many years. And I'm going to make it long story short. But Todd, you know, he, he came to the point where he was nearly going to kill his girlfriend. They weren't married at the time. But his girlfriend and daughter that they had, just a young daughter. And he was so close to getting to that point. And every day, you know, he said, like, what's the point of living? You know, if there's a God out there, listen to me. And he opens like, you know, Yellow Pages? Do you know Yellow Pages? Who doesn't know what Yellow Pages is? Really? It's, it's kind of like Google for phone numbers, <laughs> but it's a physical book where you can search numbers. And he opened the yellow pages up and it flipped, you know, to, I think it was to a church. But he ended up getting in his car and he was just going to like do something crazy. And he ended up pulling up to this church and this man rocked up and said, hey, how you going? All smiling. And Todd, being angry as, he's like, what's wrong with you? To this happy guy. And he said, it's not, it's not what's wrong with me, but it's what's been made right. And that like really hit me when I heard that testimony. Like, man, that is so true. Like it is what has been made right. You know, Jesus made everything right. Jesus actually died for us and everything that we've done in our past, drugs, sleeping around, playing around with whatever, you know, getting into witchcraft or trying to experiment with supernatural things. Everything in the past can be forgiven. Is that good? Can I get an amen? Yeah, literally everything can be forgiven. And today, I just want to remind you that you're all chosen. And you might think you're not chosen because of those things that you've done in the past that might seem unforgivable. And people battle with unforgiveness to themselves. You know, they say, maybe forgive me mum or dad, but I can't forgive myself because I can't get over it. But when you hold unforgiveness, you're actually limiting your life. And you know unforgiveness, it kind of eats at you almost physically. Your insides like die. And when you hold, you know when you hold a grudge at someone or you're offended, do you know how your like insides get a bit, almost like it's eating you? That's what it does. That's, that's how strong the unseen things are in life. And that's what we want to dig at this year. We want to dig at those unseen things and we want the secrets to be revealed and exposed. Because when you expose darkness with light, it's beautiful. It's like the truth sets you up. Free. free. The truth sets you free. And truth only comes from God's Word. I could make up a lie that sounds like a truth to anyone and it might sound good, but I always need to back up what someone says truth is with God's Word. So if there's one desire for me, for you this year, is for us to know God's Word and God's truth so that we can live like chosen people. Who'd want to live like a chosen person? Amen. Can, we can't get the lights down or not. Is it going to play with... Um, <laughs> can, is that possible? Yeah, I know people are maybe a bit ashamed or embarrassed to step out when they're 
confronted. But, you know, whenever we make a decision, if I asked you, you know, if any of that related to you, and I said, would you put your hand up? I'm not saying do that now. But it's okay to do that. Because when you do that, you're actually a step closer to being set free. If you do this, you're actually holding yourself back because it's easy to be comfortable and say, oh, I might wait off another week. I think I can deal with offence one more week or one more month. But God says now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. And I want to live through salvation. Salvation isn't holding on to offence or unforgiveness. That's like the total opposite, if I can be honest. So if you're feeling like a bit uncomfortable, that's fine too, because I've been in your position as well. And I put my hand up and the truth is what we want. So can everyone just bow their heads tonight? I'm just gonna make that call. I wanna make that call public. And God says, you know, at the end of life, heaven and hell are real. I don't wanna scare you here but heaven and hell are real, whether you believe it or not. And at the end of life, you know, nothing can get us to heaven. It's not what we do, but it's what Jesus has done already. And nothing you do, people say, oh, you know what, I can do this. I've done this many good deeds today. I think I'm gonna go to heaven if I die. But God says nothing can be added to His goodness so with your heads down, I just want you to believe that everything can be made right. Everything can be made right through forgiveness, through letting go. And starting off 2020, you know, maybe 2019 started off well and you were saying, man, this is good. This is going really well. And then it started going downhill. But I would love for that downhill to be uphill from now. And if you'd like 2020 you know, to be a place where you can let unforgiveness go and maybe grudges or bitterness. Maybe, maybe you don't have the best relationship with a family member. It doesn't matter about them, but it matters about what you give to them, what love you can bring.